Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I am back for an update video to my progress in the 3.13 Echoes of the Atlas expansion. Now I've been having a ton of fun playing this league and I've been playing the same build the whole time apart from, I'm not sure if you saw the last video of the auto bomber, I respect, but then I respect back to my discharger to finish off a bunch of stuff I wanted to do on this character. I'm still trying to figure out what I play next but I thought I'd give you guys an update into how this build is functioning and where I'm going to be moving forward. Now, the Discharger is putting out some pretty insane DPS right now. I will include the uh, pace bin down below of this exact build. It's hitting around about 13 million Ignite DPS. Now, that's not per Ignite. That is actual DPS of the Ignite. And each Ignite is going for around about 42 million, I think. Uh, if the uh, if, if my memory of the POB is correct um, And uh, we did manage to craft a pretty insane staff right here You can see plus two lightning gems one endurance one power charge 130% increased burning damage crafted fire damage over time multiplier on a plus one max endurance and power charge potentiality rod base uh, Which is extremely strong uh, we're still using Farrell's Fur and a bunch of other stuff here, and I need to fix a little bit of my gear, so we're going to be doing that over the next couple of days. But if you're wanting to play this build in particular, I will be releasing a build guide in around two to three days of this build. It's got a fully budget version without this Farrell's Fur, so if you're thinking you need the Farrell's Fur to play this build, don't worry, there is a budget version. Uh, so there's a budget version, and then there's going to be like a medium, uh, like maybe 20, 30 exalt version, and then a fully end game version as well. Uh, but after all of that, uh, as you may have seen in the title, this video is actually mainly going to be talking about the Atlas, and what I've been doing with the Atlas here, and how I've made my uh, lots of currency, all of the currency on this build, which is around about 60, 70 exalts I've put into everything here, and then another 60-ish -ish exalts over here with a couple of Maven's Orb, uh, and a, quite a few things to sell over here as well. So I do have quite a bit of currency, pretty much just from running endgame content in the Atlas, most specifically endgame bossing, using the endgame Uncharted Realms tree. Now, I will not go fully over how to actually get everything and all of the points in the Atlas. That's going to be in another future guide. Again, in about two or three days, I will be releasing a full guide for the, uh, the actual Atlas and how to progress it. But basically, I've just gone fully into uh, getting a bunch of stuff with Guardians, Elder, and Shaper drops, and then uh, Awakener levels, dropping additional Awakened support gems from Cirrus, and uh, progressing your Cirrus and Conqueror influence faster. Um, but, uh, so those are the points that I've gone into. That's what I like to do to make the money. If your build can handle bossing, that's extremely good here. But the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about today is all of the rest of the eight different uh, places in the Atlas. Uh, how I went about specking them in, and what I think is personally the best. However, before I talk about, you know, what I've chosen. Let me say this right at the beginning. If you want to choose a certain Atlas point, just do it. You're gonna have the most fun in this game just choosing these Atlas points that you think you will enjoy the most. If you don't like Harvest, you see I've specced into Harvest here, don't do Harvest, you know, spec into something else. Everything on the Atlas right now, all of these points make lots of money in their own way. Um, uh, like, I've seen people just specking into so many different things and making so much money, uh, especially uh, in, like, softcore trade where you can afford to just zoom, zoom, zoom. However, let's go through everything. So first of all, with Haywark Hamlet. Now, I really like crafting, and uh, I specced into all three notables of the, uh, of the harvest right here to, you know, give us more chance to find harvest groves. And then when I do find Harvest Groves, I get basically a lucky roll on all of my Harvest Crafts and uh, have a 100% increased chance, so double the chance to contain a Tier 4 plant as well, which is extremely nice right there. So this is just a super awesome place to uh, farm if you're wanting to do a bunch of Harvest Crafting. Then I just kind of went into, you know, a little bit of Beyond stuff and a little bit of Jun stuff here to just grant some extra missions for Jun right there. Turns End, this is what I decided to do with Turns End. I uh, actually wanted to go into exotic goods to begin with, with invasion bosses. 
to see if they're, you know, if dropping one additional valuable item right here, whether this would, you know, give me anything good. I don't think it's giving me anything good yet, but it could give me something good in the future. I'm gonna keep it specced in there. However, these abyss nodes, if you enjoy doing abysses, these abyss nodes are actually uh, very, very underrated to give you extra levels from everything. And then I just went into that which you seek just to give me a little bit uh, extra additional chance to get a Mirror of Delirium just for a bit of fun. And then the other interesting thing here, which I actually haven't got to proc yet, is this Great Migration. The areas with Einar missions have a 5% chance to contain additional packs of beasts instead of other monsters. Um, basically replacing quite a few different packs with a bunch of beasts. Um, I haven't got this to proc yet, but I have been saving a bunch of missions for it. Let me just show you here how many missions. Oh, wait, we can actually do it over here, can't we? Yeah, <laughs> 72 Einhar missions I've been saving for that region. Uh, so I'm going to save up to 100 and then probably just slam that. It's, uh, it's pretty intriguing. Um, so I think there's big money to be made there. Lex Proxima, what have we got here for Lex Proxima? Um, I went straight into Breach, because uh, uh, if you hit a nice Breach here, you uh, get a lot of experience through Invading Force, extra uh, chance to spawn bosses, and then get Breach Stones from the bosses as well. So some big money making here, and then some extra Harvest stuff if you uh, want to in Lex Proxima, to get double bonus of item quantity and rarity, and uh, increased chance to contain Heart of the Grove, which is the Oshabi fight, if you didn't know that. Uh, so just a little bit of fun there to spawn some more Harvest and potentially get some more Oshabi fights. If you want even more experience from Harvest, you can go into Bountiful Harvest to give 200% increased experience from your Harvest monsters, which is pretty darn strong. Lex Proxima. What has the Badger decided for Lex Proxima? Now, first of all, I did decide to go into uh, the areas have 10% chance to grant an additional Alva mission on completion. That's why I do have 68 Alva missions right here. Very much helped. Um... Uh, and then I went into Vile Oligarchs. Incursions in areas contain a Vile Flesh Merchant. Now, this has been actually one of the most underwhelming nodes on the tree. I am actually considering very soon actually specking out of these two nodes and actually going into the Parandus stuff here. Kadiri Parandus offers the rarest of five chosen items. It seems quite strong uh, and could be uh, pretty interesting to, uh, you know, find quite a bunch of uh, Kadiri stuff in, in these maps. Uh, so I'm probably going to spec out of that and go into that. However, we do have some pretty insane Delirium nodes here. And Delirium is fun. If your build can handle Delirium, I definitely recommend going into these ones. So I just took them both there. Uh, these last two nodes here are all about uh, Metamorphs though. The Rogue Metamorph is pretty funny. And then uh, Metamorphs dealing more damage, having more life, and rewards from Metamorphs in areas. 50% chance for the rewards to be doubled. Which uh, is actually pretty intriguing right there. There's some big money to be found in those nodes as well. Now to the bottom half of the tree. New Vastir, what have I chosen for New Vastir? Uh, first of all, I've chosen some Legion nodes. So these Legion nodes are pretty darn interesting. So first of all, each Legion in area contains a War Horde, an additional War Horde. Uh, and then, uh, Timeless Splinters dropped by Legion monsters in areas have a 1% chance to drop as Timeless Emblems instead. This is effectively a 100% uh, more multiplier on your timeless splinters dropped. Um, that's uh, that's basically it right there. It's extremely strong. Um, I think it's really really cool, uh, and I actually want to do a bunch of legion farming. However, you will notice that the prices for legion emblems have dramatically dropped because this node is so good. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. And then lastly, just additional sergeants, and the sergeants always have rewards right here as well for high high uh, high value targets. Very, very strong. And I have then also decided just to supplement it with some Rogue Exiles. I didn't really know what to do here. I could put it into the Abyss stuff, but look, I decided to go into Legion instead. Uh, all right, Glenak Cairns. So Glenak Cairns is basically the juice area. If you want uh, just to go straight into uh, crazy big Legions and a lot of beyond, then this area is for you. However, I would actually now consider, I would actually consider going uh, Incursion Beyond uh, instead of the Legion, because I think Incursion Beyond is actually gonna give you um, more Beyond mobs than what the Legion would as well there, which is uh, pretty interesting. And then uh, just putting Incursions on everything. Um, but these Beyond nodes here, they create so many Beyond mobs you would not believe, especially if you've got Beyond on your um, map itself. Uh, you're creating way too many Beyond Demons. 
However, the last little thing here, these strong boxes are very, very strong. The strong boxes are pretty interesting. The strong boxes in areas have a 10% chance to be openable a second time. That's already very strong. But then you've also got the uh, strong boxes in areas are corrupted and at least rare. Now, there's a really interesting strat to use here if you're gonna take these two notables to go into, uh, uh, to always use uh, monstrous treasure on your maps that you're proccing here. It's a fairly expensive prophecy, but you're going to get back your money every single time. Monstrous treasure here, and all of the strong boxes getting corrupted, and all of them being at least rare, you're looking at some pretty crazy returns every single map that you're doing that. Um, so it's very, very strong. Uh, consider that if you want to farm some pretty interesting uh, strong box filled maps right there. Now we're on to the last two. We have Valdo's Rest. Now Valdo's Rest has probably my favorite node, and I know a lot of other people really enjoy this node as well. This node is the uh, uh, areas contain an additional Harbinger, and then the up to one Harbinger in areas is joined by reinforcements. Um, I also, actually, let me just jump back here. Uh, just in chat, I've been informed that Monstrous Treasure is around 5 to 10 C currently. Um, so I am actually probably going to buy up a few of these monstrous treasures right now and hold on to them, uh, and maybe run a hundred monstrous treasures maps at some point. That could be, uh, that could be pretty fun, I would say. Uh, however, let me just jump back to here. The Harbinger node. This is insane. This basically turns your one Harbinger, I think, into 10 to 15 Harbingers. I don't know the actual number, but it's crazy. Every single map, you've got, like, 15 Harbingers. This node is actually broken. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't know what they were thinking with this node. Like, I, you know, maybe, maybe like three or four more Harbingers would have been cool. But like, it's actually like 10 Harbingers in your map, every single map. It's kind of crazy. I've also just considered uh, going into Blight here. I, I Look, I specced into all of these Blight nodes, but I'm actually just not running Blight at all. So I'm probably going to spec out of them. Uh, Blight is, for me, is just taking a little bit too much time. I might go into the Metamorph Encounters um, and uh, then just uh, do all of that. That's probably what I'm actually going to do there. Um, but if you like Blight, these nodes are extremely strong as well. The, uh, the you know, more likely to contain multiple lanes, additional reward chest, and uh, dropping additional anointed jewelry items as well. Pretty strong. And then Lyra Arthane to end with. Uh, I've just got some uh, spores on the wind to uh, drop maps that have additional Blight Encounters enchantment modifier on them, which is pretty awesome. Um, we've then also got Probing for Weakness, which is additional breaches, and uh, they spawn 10 additional rare monsters and open and close 100% faster. And then lastly, we've got some more uh, Ironheart stuff here. So Beasts in Areas here are more likely to be less common varieties. Very strong for spawning uh, any of those big ticket beasts like uh, any of the Ferul beasts or uh, you're looking for, you know, uh, Phenumal Plagued Arachnids, those sorts of things. Uh, that is going to allow you to spawn a bunch more. Uh, if you like heists, look, I hate heists, but if you like heists, these nodes here are also some of the most OP nodes, uh, allowing you to have a 10% chance for blueprints to drop uh, to be fully revealed is very, very strong. Very strong right there. And then additional 10% chance to contain a smuggler's cache as well. It's just, it, you're just going to get a bunch of blueprints and uh, have them revealed as well. The inside job is very, very strong. Uh, and then uh, you've also got the uh, immune response here. Spawning 100% more monsters and spawning faster just means basically 100% more experience from those monsters. Very, very strong. That is all of my choices here. Um, I'm going to be focusing the next couple of days, as I said, on the build guide for this build that we're doing, and then the Atlas guide as well. Uh, but you can come watch us live at twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming if you want to come check us out. I'm getting super tired, so I'm going to go to bed. Uh, this is the end of the stream and the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, if you want to come chuck me a follow on Twitch as well, we're actually, you can see right there, we're really close to 10k follows, so you can uh, uh, definitely come check us out. I am so used to saying this is Badger Gaming. Twitch is not actually this is Badger Gaming anymore. It is this is Badger. Twitch.tv slash this is Badger. Come check us out. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Badger out.